YouTube, my name is Chrissy and this is A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. Thanks for being here today. In today's video, I will be sharing two fun hands-on spring projects. The first project is making a frog and toad habitat for our garden featuring DK's book, Let's Get Gardening. And in the second project, we're learning all about earthworms. We made a wormery inspired by Hearth Magic's worm learning set on Etsy. A frog and toad habitat for the garden featuring DK's Let's Get Gardening book. And I shared this resource in my favorite unschooling resources for spring video. I'll link that down below. It features 30 easy gardening projects for kids in three categories, kitchen, garden, wildlife garden, and recycling garden. Under the wildlife garden page 82, there is a make a frog and toad habitat. For this project, we only needed a few supplies we already had lying around in the garden. A shovel, a clay pot, soil, leaves, water, a saucer, and gravel. Bella, who is our wildlife gardener, got started by reading the instructions and gathering her supplies. Then she dug a hole large enough to be able to wedge in the clay pot on its side and using the same soil to fill the pot. She also wished to add a few stones in the pot. Um, I'm gonna put the leaves in it, but I think they might be too big so I might crumble it. Next, adding damp leaves as a cozy bed for our new guests. Bella foraged two large seashells and gravel from our backyard to use as the saucer, and she also used recycled rainwater we had collected that same morning. Okay, and what does your sign say? Frog and Toad's Home. Let's see. Making a sign for Frog and Toad is optional, but Bella did this using a popsicle stick, a twig, and yarn. Here are a few other resources we paired with this project. Bella reread a few stories from the Frog and Toad collection, uh, books that also made our favorite unschooling resources list. She also did some copy work and labeling a frog with this Anatomy of a Frog printable set by Green Urban Mama. We also read through the eyewitness book on amphibians. There's so much information to learn from this resource. The anatomy, diet, survival, the differences between a frog and toad. We also used this resource last spring during our study on the life cycle of a frog. And I'll link that video in a card up above and in the description section down below in case you're interested in watching it. Moving on to our wormery project, which was inspired by Hearth Magic's worm learning set on Etsy. Included in the set are several posters that we uh, enjoy displaying them on our shelf during our unit studies. The Little Wiggle Worm, a finger play song that the kids enjoyed learning. The Anatomy of a Worm worksheet that Bella used to label after we studied and identified the parts of a live worm. Here are the instructions for making a wormery, which we'll get back to in a moment, coloring pages, and a fun word search. 
My preschooler particularly enjoyed this poetry book, Warm Weather. It describes rainy day fun um, with playful text about how children enjoy the rainy uh, weather as much as a warm does. Creating a warmery. For this project, we used large glass jars. Uh, to the bottom layer, you want to add a gravel, and this is going to help with draining. Then we're adding alternating layers of dirt and soil, making sure that the top layer is soil. Finally, adding dead leaves and grass on top. Really a super simple project that I just led the instructions and I let the kids have at it at the backyard and um, make the wormery themselves. And so we, as we were placing the worms into their new temporary home, we studied the anatomy of the worms and identified all the parts. poked holes in paper towels and secured it on top of the jar with a rubber band. Now this part is optional. Your worms will not crawl out of your jar, so don't worry about that. But we did this to prevent them from drying until they burrowed down in the soil. Whether you have a lid or a paper towel or not, you do want to make sure that you are misting your the top of your jars every day and so we just keep a small mister here next to the jars so that the kids can be in charge of this work. Remember that earthworms are night crawlers so to give them darkness we wrapped the jars in play silks and the wormeries just look so nicely displayed on our shelf and it's also functional because when the kids want to observe our worms we just remove the silk and then just put it back on uh, but another option would be to store your jars in a dark cabinet or a closet and of course be sure to release your earthworms after a few days of observation All right, friends, that's it for today's video. I hope that the spring season is inspiring you as much as it is us to learn all about the natural world. Don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't already for weekly videos. Until next time, thanks so much for your love. Crawling underground down. down came the rain Mud was all around The rain filled the tunnels Pushed out the little worm And soon all the sidewalks Were the only place to squirm